And good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Haringey Stadium. And tonight, the ninth meeting of the season for the Stadium Trophy and the most important race of the Stock Car Calendar, the World Stock Car Championship Final, sponsored by our very good friends, Messrs. W.D. and H.O. Wills. And coming down from the pits are the competitors in the grid position order. So as they come out, I'm sure you're going to lift the roof of all these grandstands around here. Don't worry, they belong to the GRA, not to us. So let's hear everybody cheering as they come out. That's the idea. Come on, let's hear it from all you fans from everywhere. Here come your favourites. That's the idea. I'll introduce them all to you again when they line up in front of the grandstand, but let's have cheers for everyone as they come out of the paddock. The mechanics are bringing them out at the moment. These are the, the cars. The drivers will be following them down in a moment, and they're still rolling down the, the hill which leads down from the pits. And in a few moments, they will be introduced to our guest of honor this evening, Miss Valerie Brooks. Tremendous crush, I understand, in the pit area tonight, which is making things extra difficult for our very gallant pit, pit officials. But Charlie Varney out there, the chief pit marshal, is having a, a heroic struggle to get the car through the seething mass of spectators and supporters who rather anxiously uh, want to have a quick word with the driver before he comes out. This is understandable, but it seems as though it's causing a spot of delay as they come out of the pits. And just to recap, I'm sure you're all well aware of this fact, just as well as I am, but uh, there have been, throughout the country this year, 12 qualifying rounds in which competitors were able to try and get into tonight's big race. Here's the defending champion's car. And here's the man with the gold roof at the moment. Whether he's going to be able to retain that for next season remains to be seen. The next 25 laps will surely tell us. As I was saying, there were 12 qualifying rounds, then we had two semi-finals, one at Coventry and one at West Ham last week. And from those, uh, and a total entry of something like 400 competitors, we see tonight 25 of the top drivers in the country competing for this premier event of the year, the World Championship. Still struggling through the ceiling mass in the paddock, and it's number five, Dougie Ward up his car out now. Driver has a, quite a following, and his own, his own driver, Phantom, so I'm sure they're going to be cheering. I haven't seen number five Phantom anywhere yet, but I'm sure it's around somewhere. And you can imagine the feelings, I'm sure, now, of the 25 competitors as they wait to come down here. They're all rather anxious to get into the race and get on with the job. I'm sure that this is how they're feeling, but on occasions like this, we must have our pageantry. Oh, well, here they come. Pretty well, all of the cars out now, I think that's one of the back markers, Chippy Weston, coming out, which should indicate that all the cars are on the, on the track at the moment. All looking very pristine, having been smartened up especially for the occasion. And to this, I think, full credit to all the drivers and their very eager band of enthusiastic mechanics. Now there's the entire pack of cars on the grid, and they're uh, in the paddock waiting to come out are the drivers themselves and this is an excellent chance to cheer I'm sure you can see them all shuffling up there so now over to our maroon <laughs>
to number two on the grid. And may I introduce you to the youngest competitor in tonight's final, third last year from Ipswich, Alan Wardrop. <laughs> and the kiss for the young woman. And he didn't, he didn't even blush. And down the line, having passed over the back to number three on the grid, this of course is on points qualification, and also from Suffolk, from Woodbridge, number 68, Trevor Frost. <laughs> Moving quickly down the line, we want to get on to the ball here, and our next man, number 61, from Sunbury on term, second last year, number 61, Ken Freeman. Back and down to the defending world champion from Oxford, that blustering character, Freddie Mitchell. Uh, Miss Brooks wishes Freddie well, as I'm sure they all do. And down the line to our next competitor, one of the oldest, if you just mind me saying so, but still one of the best, number 104, Ted Pinkhurst. Father of the one we met earlier, number five, from the switch, no more, Number 331, Ron Pears. Now oh, come on, I can't hear you cheering for all of these characters. We move now to a London driver from Glasgow, number 133, Terry Cole. There's a guy with a shock of red hair. And now to the next man, he's in charge, in charge of the drivers at least, number 409, chairman of the association, Chick Woodruff. From East London, from Chinford, garage man, then cyclist. Alan Briggs. And we're really moving down here rather quickly. And from the Midlands, a rare visitor, but we won't give him 152 Ron Rogers. And staying right in the middle here to meet our next driver from Hammersmith, number six, Johnny King. And down to the next batch here, and from the Midlands also, from South Kilburn. Is number 62, uh, 163 rather, Roy Goodman. And we're down into a different angle around here. They seem to have lined them up rather differently. And it's number 35 they're meeting now from Mill Hill, Rob Dorr. From Birmingham or thereabouts, the top, the immaculate gentleman who greets a special salute from Miss Brooks. Well done. Black and white show indeed. And it's Terry Hayward. And now we really come to the old man, the old Vic himself, the man on the gold standard, Vic Faraday. The man who's competed in more finals than all other competitors tonight. And next, new boy, 475, from Network, George Ansel. From Aylesbury and Bucks, a first appearance for 159. And here he is. And we move down to 127, Jeff Harrison from Cheltenham. And still in London here with another grand veteran of the sport, number seven, the Warriors, Darkie Wright. And from across the water, across the channel, from Holland, the Dutchman, Barry Van der Nukla. is getting a nice cheery word from this family from to be moved down. And the next man from the surprise qualifier of us, Les Wesley, number 125. And last, but by no means least, number 62, Chippy Weston. And with every competitor now having received his back and the donations from our sponsors, they're all coming round on the lap of honor. Season on the roof of their car, and I'm sure you're going to cheer each and every one as they come round in front of you before they then begin the really serious business, the really serious business of racing for the 25 lap World Championship. Off we go on the warming lap start, and as usual, I'm going to ask you to wave and cheer and shout because the boys tell me. 
been so much to them that they've got friends on the outside of the fence. They won't have any on the inside of the fence for the next 25 laps. The loveliest seat in the world, a stock car in a race like this. Right, good luck to everybody. <coughs> And the Jeep controlling them nicely down the back straight. As they go down towards the pit. Twenty-five competitors then for the race of the season. Twenty-five laps to go. A wonderful prize at the end of it all. A gold room for the winner. Very handsome cash award and a very wonderful silver trip. And as they come into the pits, the tempo begins to build up. You can almost sense it and cut it with a knife. The opening lap is so vitally important for a race like this. Organizing, hanging back there slightly as they come up behind the starter who begins to speed away. Down goes the flag and a good start. With Alan Wardropper holding that inside line, Layton pushing him wide as they go down the back straight, set up for through, please. Ken Cleveland moving on the inside of Alan Wardropper, who surprisingly has dropped back. Ken Freeman gets the push from Ted Pankhurst and Alan Wardropper right out into about seventh place at the end of the first half of all the way to go. This is something you from Trevor Frost with Ted Pankhurst, Ken Freeman and Freddie Mitchell with Toby Wardropper sprinting on the inside. Mitchell, Mitchell and Freeman dropping back there. Alan Wardropper begins to make his presence felt now as they come into the third quarter. And the first casualty round goes one by two on the fifth quarter. That's on the second lap. And it's all the way to the end for those folks who have the front of one each of the seven leaving as they go down the back straight from Ted Pankhurst now in second spot, Trevor Frost third, Debbie Ward over four, Freddie Mitchell fifth, and Alan Ward over six coming down the straight here for the third point. 25 laps to go, and George Anthony, 475, is in the fence on the green lane fence as they go. We go down the back straight and make the starting to nose it on the back marker there. The back marker at this stage, 163 foot them. And as they go into the fifth corner to the green lane fence, rather, it's Mason. And Alan Warder, the pass is Freddie Mitchell there, drops a couple of places in the order is now 42, 104, 68, 245, 61, and then 38. And Mitchell visibly slowing. So it's off giving Debbie Warder of the point of order, the pass in there to move up on the leader morning to. Fourth place now, this boy's third place is Ward Mitchwick, who has been placed very regularly here in the past. Les Wesley in 125, it's double on the pit corner. And they see a well and truly mix among the back markers now, with the race only five laps old. And going round on their sixth lap, it's Ward Mitchwick in the lead still from Tank in 104. Back market in trouble, the top in 154, and Ron Rogers in 152. Round goes 409, Chick will drop on the green lane fence on the sixth lap, so he's out of the way of the crowd this day. And with Leighton sticking his way through, he gets him off, Chick will drop to the section of the second now. And right on his bumper now is Ted Pankhurst, the 404. He's settling, he's settling on the inside. And Pankhurst comes through to take the lead at the end of the eighth lap. Only half a body in it, but he's leading. That's it. From Walter Leighton with. W. Ward Roper in third place, Alan Ward Roper fourth, and in fifth place, Trevor Frost in car 68. And my goodness, they're all tightly bumped there. One body is in trouble again in 152. Not, not accustomed to our Tomac surface here at Harry Gay. And in tank first, leading then at the end of the ninth lap in 104. 62 in second, third is number five. Fourth is 245. And Johnny King is now coming through in rapid fire in car number six. There's a man to watch at this stage of the race, not quite the halfway mark yet. But Frankfurt increases his lead to a three-length one from Orbitation, with Leighton having about three-length also from number five. 
And then slow down with two, four, five with King. Nestling on the inside of him there, going down the back straight, trying to challenge, but walks up with 409 and holding him up and walks up and picks the barrel there on the quick corner as the leaders come round here. And it's 104 to 42, number five. A big gap then is at 245, getting a push from King. King tried to spin more over there, but the youngster was with it. He held on, he's holding King and way down the back straight. A tremendous scuffle here. The back mark is still circulating. We've got two in many retirements at this stage. 25 starters and they raise 12 lap goals. And it's 104 Pepper Hill Street. Next place shoots down there in first place from all the ladies in car 42, Teddy Ward up, but right behind them, they're very close together, within a length of each other, stretch from them. And as they go down in front of us here, Johnny King looks to be, the King Freeman rather, looks to be in trouble in car 61, he's slowing, and it's well out of the order now. Johnny King has dropped back with his challenge, John Evans has lost the wheel of car number 37, and he's running around with staff coming off the front half, and back up to the luxury off the driver. Pankhurst has reached the lead to about two lengths going into the lane lane then on the 15 staff. Ten laps to go. And my goodness, down the back straight. Dougie Wardrope has moved through on the inside of Jet of Orbit Lake to take over second place. So this grand veteran from Ipswich is still in there with a fighting chance. He's now about three lengths, four lengths behind Pankhurst. Pankhurst being held up by Les Wesley at 125. Well, he just brushed aside down the back straight. And now goes Aubrey Lake in car number 42 on the green lane then. Throws away his chance of being in the first three. And so the order now is 104 by two lengths from number five. In third place from the 16th lap is Adam Walter in car 245. Then comes 68 to the front. Number six, Johnny King. Rock door number 35. That's the order. It's round on the far side. Goes. 154, the top on the Green Lane bench. He spun round there. And the race and the track is now beginning to tell the business of where he's about. And as they come round here, it's the leader still again, 104. There he is with about a length lead, a little more, no, two lengths lead now down the back straight from number five, Wardropper. Third place, Alan Wardropper. So the Wardropper come there, in there again. And they always seem to be at the end of a Harry Gay final. Big Perry there being passed by 409. Then comes back and challenges again. And Freddie Mitchell's in trouble. And so too is the Dutchman and Ron Rogers. 386 and 152 in trouble on the Green Lane then. As the leaders come down here, they go faster. Next time round, Mr. Scarlett, five laps to go. And it's 104 Pankhurst from number five, Wardrobeer. In third place, 245 Alan Wardrobeer. The Wardrobeer making a concerted effort now as they come in. And Johnny King did trouble on the top corner in car six. Also with their 152 and 409. And bad luck to those boys. King coming the reverse way of the track, having lost interest in the race, it would seem. Freddie Mitchell and Aubrey Lake having a bit of a ding dong in seventh and eighth placings, I think, as they come round. And there's the leader coming round with a four this time for 104 Pankhurst. A dark horse outside it almost, but a man right bang in form. And down the back straight, Alan Wardrop is in trouble. In car 245, he's tangled up there with the Dutchman. The Dutchman who was in on the bend there, he came across, the Wardrop came round, and that's thrown away the younger man's gun. And yes, it was three laps to go. It's 104, number five. Less than a length of fast now. My goodness, what a terrific finish. And Wardrop takes the lead. Number five, Dougie Wardrop takes the lead. Down the back straight with one will be two laps to go. My voice is stroking as they come round the big corner. Behind Alan Wardrop, Alan Breedsman. Number five in the lead. It's second place, Pankhurst in 104. And in third place, Rock Door in car 35. Then comes Trevor Frost and Aubrey Layton in car 42. But my goodness, it's Dougie Wardover who passed the Cammy Tech Pankhurst with two laps to go, coming in as hard as last lap. And he goes past the grandstand here, two lengths ahead of 104, quite a length ahead of 35, who's almost a quarter of a lap behind now. And in fourth place is Trevor Frost in car 68. Then comes Layton in car 42. And Darcy Wright in number seven, but here's Wardrop 
Golden Flag and the new world champion, Dougie Wardrobler. In second place, 104, Jeff Franklin. The race not yet over. A long way to go yet. Can we keep the lights out, please? The race far from over for the back markers who are being slowed as they come round there. But the decision is made, and it's the veteran, Dougie Wardrobler, who's been there about for many times has finally achieved his ambition of winning the 1963 Cup Car World Championship final. Behind him in second place, Ted Pankhurst in 104. In third place, number 35, Rob Dorr. In fourth place, number 68, Trevor Frost. In fifth place, number 42, Orbit Layton. In sixth place, number 7, Darky Wright. Seventh, number 38, Freddie Mitchell. Eighth, Number 138, Alan Briggs. Ninth, number 409, Woodruff. Tenth, number 133, Terry Cole. And now the, the winner is known. We'll make the presentation on the grandstand, uh, in front of the grandstand, rather, in a few moments when I've got my breath back again, and I'm sure you've got yours. But the fireworks there heralding the new 1963 world champion, Dougie Woodruff, are now getting tremendous reception from his pals down there. Right, well, I've just dashed around the pits now to try and get hold of the new world champion. Congratulations to you, Dougie. Thanks very much, Peter. What does it feel like to be world champion? Well, it feels great, really. And uh, what sort of a race was it for you, then? Uh, it was a hard, a hard race. There was no let-up right from the start. You had to keep, had to keep going. And uh, once I saw Alan sort of drop back, I knew that if, to do anything, I'd got to keep really going. And... Uh, uh, it was just a question of pressing on and uh, going as fast as one could all the way through. And did you know you were in front when you passed, Ted? Uh, yes, I knew where I was throughout the race. I mean, I'd started fairly well up from the front and I knew the positions. And uh, uh, as I was getting nearer to the front, I saw I felt my chances were getting better. And uh, although I admit I had a jump to get past Ted, he was, he was really going. And... Uh... You thought it was pretty hectic all the way, didn't it? It was, yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, congratulations to you, Dougie. Thanks very much.